Hey, I'm Emma Garlett, and on today's episode of Paint It Black, I want to talk about a sensitive but important topic, slavery. Slavery and stolen wages are a blemish on WA's history, and I want to highlight it this week. And before I start, this episode will contain names and images of people who have died, so please take care while watching. Join me as I paint it black. When you think of slaves, what comes to mind? Would you believe me if I told you there are people alive today who would have been considered slaves? Probably not. But whether you believe it or not, we had slaves in WA. Slave is a strong word, and I use it with the utmost caution. But the reality is, our grandparents' generation did not have a choice in the work they were forced to do by white authorities. They were directly controlled and dominated by others. They were under government and institutional subjugation. This was highlighted by an STM cover story, which laid bare the reality of the cruel institutions, laws and decisions facilitated by the stolen wages shame, of which many of our grandmothers and grandfathers are victims. Barbara Moore, who has had multiple generations of family members paid in tea and sugar, called for justice, saying, I demand that we be paid as a slave, a servant and a maid. Many generations of our families within our community are victims of stolen wages. And one person who knows it all too well is Glenis Yaron. She's now 77, but when she was just the tender age of 11, she was separated from her parents and taken to St Joseph's Native School and Orphanage at New Norcia, where the nuns made her toil six and a half days a week. She said she remembers the meticulousness with which she had to wash, iron and pack endless loads of college uniforms belonging to privileged white boys and would be whipped on the ankles if they weren't working all the time. Telling STM, it really hurt. We just had to do what we were told. She said she will always remember crying after being torn away from her parents for five of her most formative years. That heartbreaking experience also happened to Barbara Moore, who's 72 now. She told STM she was shunted from one institution to the other from the age of 13 to 18, including the Methodist-run Magumba Mission, near the Moore River Native Settlement, enduring endless, relentless laundry work at all of them, saying, I never thought about money when I realised we were entitled to it, remembering what we had to do in these homes. They really are stolen wages. I want justice, what's rightfully ours and truthfully belongs to us. In 2020, a class action was launched in the federal court. This class action by Shine Lawyers was on behalf of thousands of Indigenous Australians in Western Australia whose wages were unjustly withheld or not paid as a result of the wage control legislation in effect until 1972. It followed a successful case in Queensland the year before. Glenis and Barbara will be watching the class action closely, as will so many of our community in WA. Our elders need to be paid what they are owed and more. The state government needs to come to the table. We cannot afford to keep waiting and watch our elders wither away before this is resolved. The law and the decisions of government and institutions cause so much pain for my family and many other Indigenous families. In the community, I see the hurt, the pain and the suffering our people still go through. And there is still a lot of intergenerational trauma to fight. Resolving this stolen wages shame is a step towards healing and truth-telling, an integral part of reconciliation of our nation. The most powerful tool we have is to speak our truth and share our story. This is a part of our story. Thanks for watching Paint It Black with me, Emma Garlett. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Have a good one.